Hello, Greg from Balloon Markets here and welcome to BMTV Balloon Basics, where we show you the basics that you need in the balloon industry. We're joined by Mark once again from Goldtex. Mark, thank you for coming. You're welcome. And today, Mark is going to be showing you how to do something called a double bubble. So, Mark, over to you. Thank you. So, we've got a 16-inch diamond clear, just married printed latex balloon. And then we're going to use our 11-inch ivory and just fold that down so that will slide easily inside the neck. And you want to take that most of the way in, but you want to leave a little bit of neck just proud so you can hold on to that okay. for later. All okay. right. And then we're going to inflate this with a trigger outlet on a 10 foot extension with helium. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to inflate the outer first. So we've got our yellow sizing box. Yeah. And the largest aperture here is the 14 inch aperture. So I'm going to put the nozzle into the outside of the balloon. Yeah. So this is inflating the 16 inch balloon. Seal with my fingers. and then measure the, to the outer of the 14 inch. Yeah. And this is, the, this is the slightly complicated bit. You then have to put the nozzle onto the inside 11 inch latex. Okay. And then slide your fingers down and create a seal around that. Now at this point, the nozzle may be stretched over the end of the balloon. Yeah, I see what I mean. So you just use a gentle bit of pressure to open that up. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And now you've got free flow and I can inflate the rest of the inside balloon to my 11 inches. That will expand the outer balloon to our 16 inch size. Okay, perfect. Okay, to finish that off, we're gonna tie that. Now you can, if you're strong enough, tie as we normally would, both balloons together. Yeah. But a little tip, if you're struggling with that, is to, tie using the inner 11 inch so neck. Just the inner one. Yep. So we pull that out over our thumb, round the back. Now I can take that through my arms, but you might not be able to. Okay. So I'm just gonna hook the neck at that point there. Yeah. Take your arm back round, okay. grab hold of the neck, and then pull it back in between your thumb and your forefinger as you normally would. And a little tip maybe is to use the ribbon just to drag that over to create your knot. And there you go, oh, that's fantastic. So there you have it. That is how you create a double bubble. So essentially, um, we're gonna use a precision air to inflate to the right size and it inflate each time. But the reason people downsize is actually to get a round balloon that's nice and durable and strong. Okay. So if we inflate one of these balloons. But we imagine that we've inflated that using any, any air machine or hand pump. Yeah. You're actually starting to get the beautiful tear shape of the Qualitex helium filled balloon. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and what you might want to do is to, to round that off. Um, but you've also got a surface tension of the balloon uh, because it's been stretched to that size. Yeah. So if we use a balloon sizer, what you can actually do is you can downsize to nine inches here. Okay. Until that just goes through. Yeah. And what you end up with is a rounder, yeah, yeah. softer, more durable balloon. So when people downsize their air filled work, yeah. it makes it really durable. Okay. So it's less likely to burst if it was... It's less likely to burst. All, all balloons that pop are, uh, uh, pop from surface tension being broken. Yeah. yeah. Rapidly broken. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and the elastic effect pops it. So when that uh, is, is happening, it's more likely to happen on something sharp if, uh, if the balloon's under a lot of tension. Yeah. As soon as you downsize a balloon, you take that elasticity out, yeah. and then it's a lot, lot harder to pop a balloon. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to try and pop this one with your foot? No. You're going to make me... Th okay. I'm going to make you pop. I did not expect this, everybody. Okay. So, just try and burst that balloon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not with one foot, anyway. Yeah. 
Don't yeah. worry, it's Qualitex. Yeah, that did not burst. So that is downsizing. That's and downsizing. that is the reason you were downsizing. You might have seen him using sand weights in some of the shows that we've done before. And today he's going to show us how to make a sand weight. So Mark, over to you. So why sand weights, I guess, is the, is the first thing. Good question. Um, uh, water's readily available. So easy to get your balloon, double stuff it, drop it onto a tap. Uh, uh, and then you've got a weight and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that um, but a few years ago uh, uh, quite a few years ago now on a warm summer's day I used cold water from a tap with uh, a Qualitex uh, uh, purple balloon and tied them off underneath my weights and what happened uh, because there was cold water in hot day you ended up with condensation inside a marquee on the outside of the balloon so the yeah. balloons looked like they were leaking uh. also the water ran through the pigment and it stained the tablecloths. Okay. So that's why when I always say if you've got a sand weight or you can use a sand weight, I'd prefer to because of my own experience of, of, of getting it wrong. That's good. Um, uh, so uh, literally every time I'm going to use a, a latex balloon, uh, I'm going to double stuff and just to do that, I just fold up a, a, a balloon, one, two, three, four, and then just drop it inside the neck. And there we go, that's a double stuffed balloon. So okay. when we talk about double stuffed balloons, just one inside the other. Right. Um, you don't have to use a balloon. You could use a little roll of bags. When I first started, the bank used to give me lots of free ones. All uh, right. Uh, and I usually just literally, simply yeah. in the bag, and then that was that was the weight. But you, you, that looks ugly. It does look ugly. Um, have you, do you sell anything? To it's, cover it. It's funny, here at Balloon Market, Mark, we do sell something that's not a Qualitex product, so I'm okay. not going to let you touch it. I'll, I'd burn. Because you would burn. I just self combusted. But we've got Qualitex. these little cardboard, cardboard boxes, and they are perfect for, be careful, for this sort of thing. So you just fold those over like that. You'd never have done this, obviously. No. And not since Qualitex stopped making them. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. So, Fantastic. and I guess you can just put whatever weight you want in there. And we've, we've used pebbles ourselves before. Yep. And uh, what we actually do as well is some steel offcuts and things like that, scraps of steel. So great little boxes. But One thing that is important with sand, Greg, is that you use kiln dried or very dry sand. Yeah. If you try and uh, use sand that isn't dry, it just won't go through yeah. any form of uh, 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 funnel. And we, um, we've learned that because we have tried. Have you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's really easy, even if you buy kiln dried sand and, and then you don't leave it in a really dry atmosphere, it will attract moisture again. Yeah. And I've had yeah. that happen before, and yeah. that's, that, that's a nightmare. So it does come with its, uh, its issues. Um, but we've got our double stuffed balloon. So what I'm gonna do first, is I'm just going to help it by just pre-stretching the balloon slightly okay. and then drop the balloon onto the end mm -hmm. of there and then literally fill away. Now obviously with um, a, a, a small funnel you know it's going to take some time so a lot of people cut the end off the funnel to make a bigger aperture but it will only fill so far mm. on its own yeah and then what you have to do is you have to press down oh i see and what i'm essentially doing is i'm filling the neck of the balloon each time and then pressing that in yeah and it, using that technique you can just keep stretching the balloon out until you get to your desired weight. Yeah. So that could just keep on going. And just and keep going on going and going, going and going until and, until you get to the right piece. So if you only need a small weight, then there's there's, there's no point using uh, uh, additional yeah. uh, uh, additional weight. Um, That's really effective, isn't it? So as you can see, as you stretch it yeah. out and press it down, and now all the sand is left inside. Now the other great thing about sand weights is that you can flatten them out and that gives you a larger surface area, yeah. which is really good on a windy uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, environment or where you've got a lot of pull off a helium arch because it stops dragging yeah. of your weight. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's it. Sand weights. Tie a knot in it. Tie a knot in it and away you go. And there you go. We are joined by Mr. Chris Horn from Amscan. Chris, thank you for coming. You're welcome. And today, Chris is going to show us how to correctly inflate 
an orbs balloon, or is it called an orb balloon, Chris? Um, what should we call it? I don't know. It's, it's, it's got a Z on the. It's got call a Z it an orbs. Orbs, yes. an orbs balloon. So, Chris, over to you. Okay. Well, the, the first thing that you've got to realise with these um, is that they're made from a different kind of foil from a standard balloon. Yeah. It's a bit stretchy. Okay. And that's what makes them what they are. So we need to stretch the foil out until the wrinkles are gone. Yeah. And that means using a latex inflator rather than a foil one. If you use yeah. an auto shut off, it's not going to work. Yeah, okay. So, so you've got you've got on that on a hose at the moment yeah. with a trigger, but if you were to just be using a cylinder and putting yeah, it on... Yeah, a flexi tip flexi one is tip works one is. fine, or a push valve with okay. a little... Um, a little hat, yes. as we call it. Yeah. Okay, that's a good <laughs> word for it. Any of those will work. Whatever yeah. you use to inflate your, your latex balloons is what you should use okay. for an orbs. Okay, so you take it out of the packet and unfold it. On the back here, you will see a little little instruction sheet. Um, I know sort of the, the, the great British, possibly male way of doing things is just to take that off and throw it away. Exactly, that's what you do. But it really does pay just to read it through, <laughs> just to make sure, okay. It's all very simple. It says use a latex inflator and inflate it till the wrinkles have gone, which okay, is what I'm telling go. you now. Um, it's even printed on the balloon. Filled with latex inflator, so oh, yeah. really you you haven't got an excuse for doing it wrong. <laughs> inflator goes into the outlet like that, and make sure you hold it firmly so that you can't feel a breeze around your fingers because yeah. that's your profits, isn't it? It so, is indeed. Yeah, you know, all of the helium goes into the balloon, and then it will start to split open down the sides as you inflate. It's a four-panel balloon, which yeah. makes it quite unique. Um, it does shock people when that it happens does sometimes. A little First bit. time you do yeah. it. Yeah. Go gently. Okay, so that's where it would stop if you used an auto shut off inflator, which yeah. is not very impressive. Yeah. Keep your eyes on the creases, on, on the, the four seams, watch those carefully, and just keep inflating. And literally, till there's no creases. Yeah. When the last little wrinkle disappears, stop. And it's as simple as that. So that's that's spherical. That's it is properly it's a, spherical. absolutely spherical. Fills a lot of space and a lot of volume. Yeah. Gives you the opportunity, or you know, to, to have four different panels of print, or two opposites, or opposing, or whatever. So there's lots of alternatives that we can use. Yeah. To get a message across on these balloons. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are my favourite balloon. I think. I, I love them. There's a lot of people now that are using them in big installations, isn't there? Absolutely. And a, a lot There's of some stunning designs online yeah. if you just search the around. The silver ones and, of course, the new rose gold one. Yeah. Depending when you watch this, it's it's what month are we in? We're in June 2017 when we're filming this. Already? And I know, time flies. And, uh, yeah, the rose gold are still relatively new. They are, but they're beautiful. So yeah. There you have it. So what it is is an orb, solid colour orb, inside a clear latex printed balloon. Um, and there's just a couple of little things that you need to know to make it work properly. Um, so the first thing is that we're going to use a 15 inch Sempertex latex and I think the 15 inch is quite important because it's the same size as the orb. Um, so so first, if you've got bigger clear balloons... I don't know, I haven't tried it, but okay. I suspect that if it's a bigger clear balloon it won't stretch, it won't be as stretched and therefore the clarity won't be as okay. good. Okay. Right. But you they, can are try very, they are very clear, aren't they? Yeah, they're really clear and shiny. So, yes, 15 inch, inflate it with air. And go as big as you dare, because you want to stretch it out nice and tight. Just hold it for a second, so that the latex will relax down a little bit. So you've got to pre-inflate it, you're trying to stretch it so that it'll take the full orb. Yes, <laughs> even when this is folded up, it's, it's quite a bulky item, so you need to stretch the balloon out. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hold that to reduce the noise. Then let it down. That's a little tip in itself. Yeah, just... Try to reduce the noise of the balloon. Just stop it flapping about and that then it'll go quiet. That happens sometimes in the office when one person's on a phone, one person's just <laughs> deflated a balloon, you've got to deflate it quietly. Yes. Good tip. I can imagine the person on the other end of the phone <laughs> wondering what on earth's going on. Take the orb and then fold it lengthways to get it quite thin. And then fold it up like that. So that it becomes as small as reasonably possible. Yeah. Now, you've given me this thing. I've introduced Chris to a castration tool. Yes. 
and a castration tool. It's basically a balloon neck stretcher is, is what we use them for. So I feel quite honored that I, I have introduced Chris to something that he's not used before. Well, I've heard of these things, but don't yeah, diminish never my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> not tried them, but yeah, here we go. New, th new thing for me too. So you do need to push the neck of the balloon well onto the pins of the tool so that it inflate it so that it stretches out the body of the balloon and not just the neck and then that does make it i will concede that that does make it a lot easier to push that inside there so yeah yeah because before um, you just use your you can, you can just use your fingers yeah can't you? you can and i do but uh, i'm now going to i like gadgets so i'm now going to go and get one of those on expenses and have to explain it to the finance team <laughs> afterwards, which would be quite funny. So the, the orb is now inside the latex balloon. Oh. And what we now need to do is to inflate the latex with air again, so that it's big enough to take the orb as it inflates. So about there, you don't need to go all the way because obviously as we're inflating the orb, it's going to push the latex is, up yeah, further. Yeah. Then the helium latex nozzle goes inside the orb and off we go. So you're just effectively inflating the it's orb like as, double bubble. as normal, yeah. yeah. Um, but if we go much further than this, this is going to burst because this is now up to capacity. Oh, so right. yeah, yeah, yeah. at least once or twice throughout the procedure, you've got to let the air out of the latex and then carry on. So you're all, just, sorry, you're just using your judgment there. As yeah, yeah, to yeah. Answer. But all the time you need to maintain an air gap between the orb and the latex, because otherwise the latex will stick to the orb okay. and split. So okay. just just keep letting it down a little bit, and then now we should be able to take the orb up full. And then the last bit is to get the air out from okay. between the two. So I just push the orb up against the top of the latex there and allow the air to escape. There we go. You may need just to pull this open and stick your finger inside just to let the last little bit out, but that one worked really well. Yeah, that's how you really do well. that. And sometimes I saw it when you were doing these ones, you sort of have to sometimes smooth the yes, air. Yes, just literally push out. the air around. Yeah. Because we want the latex to be in close contact with the orb inside. Yeah. And job done. It's far simpler than I thought it was going to be. It, it, yes, as long as you remember those two things about letting the air out repeatedly yeah, yeah. and you know maintaining an air gap at all times, then there should be no issue. And that way you can put whatever print you like onto whatever colour orb you fancy. Yeah. And it, it opens up all sorts of possibilities. Mark today is going to show us a technique to cover a cake base but with a foil balloon rather than a latex balloon. We've already done a BMTV Balloon Basics on the latex balloon that you can see on YouTube. But uh, yeah, I've never seen the one with a foil balloon before, Mark. It has been around for a very long time, so I can't take credit for uh, okay. inventing it. Um, uh, but as you know, I've become a real fan of um, the Click Click Balloon Bond. You have. And this makes this a little bit easier. Okay. So what so, do you do? Um, so we've got a, an old second-hand actually used cake yeah. board um, uh, and uh, Balloon Bong now comes in these handy strips and you're going to use at least maybe one, one and a half uh, uh, of these and I've just cut these down uh, to different sections and then I'm going to tape these directly on uh, 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 to their um, right towards the edge yeah. and I want to cover uh, all, all the way around the outside of the board. That's great actually what you just did. I hadn't even thought of that. It used to be on a roll, didn't it? And yeah. you had to just snip each one. So now you can get four at one time just from one it's, snip. It's so clever. speeds the whole process so up clever. so, so quick. Yeah. Um, and what you're going to end up with is you're going to tape a foil to the board and you end up with the, the, the custom colour. Yeah. So that's really, really cool. And I guess this is a good way of using any old balloons that you've had that have deflated and stuff right like that. Recycling. So you can recycle that everybody's obviously talking about the environment and this is a great way of, of reusing something. So yeah. Um, so you only use one side of the balloon which means cutting around the seam yeah. uh, to do it and I find it's best to lay your cake board onto the balloon 
um, and you can cut it quite roughly. You can see there, I've not, I've, I've not been too precious about how I've uh, uh, yeah. cut around the foil, um, but I think you can, you can do that so that um, you only get a single layer. Yeah. Um, uh, and then all you need to do now is remove all of uh, sticky pieces, and then I'll show you how we lay that down. Go on then. Okay, so this takes a little bit of time. But the best thing about this tape is that it is really quite fast. You're taking to them all remove. off at one time. I am. In that case, well, I can start the other end. Yeah. For doing that, just got to be careful that you don't actually start to stick the balloon to the outside. There we go. So it doesn't take that long. Okay. Uh, so once that's in position, you need to get yourself centrally uh, uh, to the board, and then I. Uh, press down, not in the centre, and then I'll stretch and stick down to my bond. Yeah. And then it's a case of stretching as you move round, and you've got to crease slightly because there's more material than will go around in the in the circle. Yeah. But it's really important that you stretch. Uh, and the more you stretch, the neater you'll get the actual finish on the board. So you say this has been around for years. Yeah. Why have I never seen it? Um, I don't know. I think I think for, for, for a long time, cake boards and centerpieces maybe weren't as um, saleable, fashionable. Um, but I think I, I think the opportunity to do. Uh, added value designs with air filled is, yeah. is, is, yeah. is now, you know, it's really coming back. Because this is pennies, isn't it? It is. And especially if you, like you say, with your idea of recycling, yeah. uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, really important to, to pull as tight as you can and stick that down. But you can see how the balloon bond's working instantly yeah. Yeah. to give you a really good finished seal. And there you go. And then with these, there's a few creases there. You just stretch those out. Uh, you got to, and that's more to do with when when you're stretching to start with. Also, um, having a flat cake board to start okay. with will really help. Um, and then if you need to, to make sure it sits flat, you can just trim off any excess that's oh, not right, okay. that's not stuck down. And that makes that sit a lot a lot flat. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I like the ombre balloon as well. Yeah, lovely. There you go, enjoy.